Okay, I'm here to talk about Alien, which came out in 1979 and was directed by Ridley Scott. The film stars Tom Skerritt, Ian Holm, John Hurt, Sigourney Weaver, Harry Stanton, Yafet Koto, and Veronica Cartwright. And also the... Uh... Yeah. It's a high watermark in science fiction horror cinema. That so many films have tried to copy and mimic, and so many have failed over the years. One of the biggest successes of the film for me is the production design. You look at all these sort of modern computer generated pixelated films that come out in science fiction and they don't look as good as Alien. The ship itself, the Nostromo, it's got all this steam rising from beneath. You've got all these switches on the wall, flickering lights, and it feels like real sort of stuff. It's this big industrial ship and it feels like a real living character in the film and it grounds the film in that sense of reality. Another thing that does that really well is the way that Ridley Scott captures conversation between the characters in very much a documentary, 24-hour, fly-on-the-wall television kind of way. There's a scene at the beginning of the film when all the characters are sat around a dining table just eating and talking, and none of them are saying anything particularly interesting. But it's the way that Ridley Scott captures that, that it makes the film grounded and real. Um, And that works really well too, which also serves the film later on when we get to the horror sequences with the alien itself. There's also a lot of great camera work in there. There's a lot of over-the-shoulder shots of people running down sort of tight corridors. There's a lot of panic and claustrophobia. I'd imagine if you saw the film for the first time in the cinema in 1979, you had no sort of preconception of the alien, you didn't, you hadn't seen it all over television before in sequels, that this is a film that would make a massive impact on you. You would come out of the cinema and you would just be like, whoa, that was intense. I can't imagine you would be able to achieve that today somehow. It's harder to shock audiences these days. Back then you could still shock people in a cinema and they would be surprised by what they'd seen. I saw an interview with Ridley Scott recently where he said that he wasn't using the actual xenomorph as we know it in his new Prometheus film because he felt as though the alien had gone to Disneyland. I understand what he's saying with that. There has been a sense of overkill with the alien in the subsequent sequels and the various other things that have come out. And it's lost a lot of its mysticism and power. The alien creature design is one of the other great successes of this film. We have to remember... The Alien is a very simple film, it's a very simple idea, but it's the way that they've dressed the simple idea up that makes it so great. H.R. Giger's creature design is just one of the greatest cinema achievements. The biology of the Alien, it's genuinely scary. But it's worth remembering that the film actually starts quite slowly. It's, it's a very sort of gradual build as we're sort of introduced to the ship and the characters. And it's like, where is this going? And then bang, when it hits, it starts to ramp up. And actually, when I re-watch the films, the scenes I enjoy the most are the setup sequences when we're sort of being introduced to the ship and the characters. And it's, I love the way that the film's patient and that the film expects you to just stay with it. And it's creating this sort of science fiction universe. And although a lot of the action just takes place on board the ship, you believe in a universe somehow. One of the big scenes in the film, and in fact, one of the big scenes in cinema generally, um, is the sequence with the chest burster with John Hurt. So well done. Again, it harks back to that fly on the wall, that sort of capturing footage sort of feel that they they managed to achieve. I mean, I have read various set reports that Veronica Cartwright was like sick afterwards because the scene was that intense and she wasn't expecting it. And the, the look of shock on the character's faces looks real. And you just feel that as well. The second after the thing bursts out of John Hurt's chest, there's like silence in the room. There's like a moment's pause disbelief almost like what has just happened i really like the uh, the music in alien as well actually it's very minimalist at times and it's very spooky and it really helps capture that sort of sense of mm, what's this generally speaking this is all darkness and shadows and it's just so well achieved that it just feels so visceral and real and you just believe in this thing and it's like and it just feels so hostile and you actually feel the same way as the characters do in the film as you're watching it you know they're like sort of pushing forward when they land on lv426 and it's this dark hostile planet fog and you can't see much and i think one of the characters actually says maybe we should turn back now and he says no we've come this far we must go on we must go on and as a viewer you kind of feel that as well you think yeah go back to the ship you know it's we'll have a cup of tea and take off Another point is the way that Ridley Scott uses his actors in this film as well. Back in 79, Sigourney Weaver wasn't really a big star. Bigger stars were probably Yafet Koto, um, Tom Skerritt perhaps. So you would have expected for Sigourney Weaver to be in Star Trek terms a red shirt and get killed off early. But uh, Ridley Scott flipped that 
and he has Sigourney Weaver as his main character, which is great because she just emerges. Obviously, we all know Sigourney Weaver is now, and if you watch the film in 2012, it's lost that. But if you watched it in 79, you'd be like, oh, all right. Yeah, it, to take you by surprise a little bit. And that's what Alien did. And so in summary, for me, Alien is an absolute masterpiece. 10 out of 10 across the board. Um, it was unrivaled back in 1979. And I still say it's unrivaled today in 2012. Let's hope that Ridley Scott's Prometheus comes somewhere near.